Hello YouTube, my name is Nero, today we have some more Call of Duty World War 2, welcome back to the PC Open Beta, ladies and gentlemen. Now to be clear, the beta is long gone, this is some pre-recorded footage I had from when the beta was actually live, and I apologize for there actually being no game audio here. You see, when I play with friends, or I play with my brother specifically here in this video, you guys can hear his voice on the gameplay, and it's really off-putting to hear his voice faintly in the background while I'm talking. Now, the workaround for that is for me to set up a virtual audio cable and do all of that, but I didn't plan that far ahead, I just wanted to play the World War 2. PC open beta and get some footage and record for you guys. So hopefully you guys go sit back, relax, and enjoy the gameplay. Today we're going to be talking about the hacking, the cheating, the exploiting that was going on during the PC open beta and what Sledgehammer Games plans to actually do about it. For those that don't know, hacking was pretty rampant in the PC open beta, right? I posted a video showing you guys what it looked like from the hacker's perspective. They had aimbots. They were very easily able to take everybody out by automatically locking onto their heads and seeing them through walls and stuff like that. It's very clearly cheating. In a blog post, Sledgehammer Games has acknowledged that hacking and cheating was definitely rampant during the PC open beta, and they said to us, we have yet to deploy the suite of anti-cheat slash hacking technology we will use when the full PC game is live. We take a level playing field extremely serious and will monitor and react to this as a top priority on an ongoing basis. So that definitely sounds pretty encouraging to me. When I first read this though, I was like, well why didn't you just have this full suite, as you call it, of anti-cheat slash hacking technology available during the beta to see if it's actually going to work because now there's going to be a possibility that when the game goes live in November that it's going to be full of modders and hackers yet again because they have not yet tested that anti-hack, anti-cheat technology against the hackers, right? But it does sort of make sense now that I think about it for them to only put maybe half of it into the game so they can see what the cheaters are using and build around that, right? So I guess it makes a little bit of sense. I'm just hoping that the PC version of the game is not going to be full of modders and hackers and cheaters and stuff like that because despite Despite that aspect of the beta, I saw a lot of people saying good things about Call of Duty World War II on PC, and that's something I didn't really expect. I expected everything to be negative, and this is terrible, terrible console port, game's bad, bad textures, bad optimization, bad everything, but there weren't really that many complaints. There were definitely some big ones, and they actually addressed those along with the hacking issue over there in their blog post. So Sledgehammer Games says they're going to be working to streamline the exit of a game. They're going to be adding scroll bars to menus. They're going to be trying to find a way to clearly indicate your party status within the user interface. They're going to be adding in lean options to the multiplayer. They're definitely going to be working to make the game feel like more of a PC game than anything, but it's important to remember we are talking about a console port to PC. So the game itself is designed to work on console. They're trying to make it all to work on PC, so there's definitely going to be some issues there, but by most accounts, if you get past like the user interface and the clunkiness of the menus and stuff like that, the game ran pretty well. It looked good, it played good, and that's promising. I don't think it's going to be the year where COD on PC suddenly is booming again and we have hundreds of thousands of people playing it like we do on console, but I can see this actually being a year where it's a step in the right direction. They have really, really burned off the PC community over the past couple of years, and so if they want to rebuild it, it's going to be a slow process. They're not going to have everybody back immediately because COD has this negative stigma on PC, but if they continue to make the game good and well optimized for the PC platform, slowly but surely I think they can rebuild that player base and make it so it's one of the more popular and relevant games on the PC platform. We're going to have to see how it plays out, ladies and gentlemen. They did say at the very end of the blog post that they are actually going to be giving us some more patch notes in the future. They didn't give us a date or an ETA or anything like that, but I can't wait for more patch notes to come because for those that don't know, going from the console beta to the PC beta, they nerfed every single submachine gun's damage, as well as its range. They buffed up the M1A1 carbine, and I can't wait to see if they decide to make some more weapon balance changes before the launch on November 3rd. Now, of course, it's difficult to say how good the changes to submachine guns actually were, because we're talking about the PC platform. Aiming is much easier to do on PC. People are just more accurate. I'm not trying to say that to be like a PC elitist or anything like that. As you guys know, I play COD on console, for crying out loud. But on PC, keyboard and mouse is always going to be more accurate than a console. That's the reason why why when you're playing on console and you have a controller, there's so much aim assist because it's just, it's inaccurate. Joysticks are inaccurate compared to a keyboard and mouse. And so I'm wondering if those nerfs are actually going to affect the console version of the game more than it affected the PC. Because even though the SMGs were nerfed, they were still really good on PC. I would just run around hip firing everybody and everybody would seem to die pretty quickly. I'm wondering if the nerf they made to some machine guns is going to affect console more than PC. And if it does, I wonder if they're going to be nerfing them even more on PC. I think they've said in the past, I can't confirm this. Maybe one of you guys could confirm 
confirm it for me down there in the comments. I believe Sledgehammer has said they're going to be balancing PC and console differently, which they have to. If they try to make it so a gun on console has to work the same way as it does on PC, it's going to be bad for everybody involved. There are guns on, that are OP on PC that are garbage on console. Like the PO8, I think it was, for Black Ops 3 was ridiculously broken on PC. Might still be for all I know. Whereas on console, nobody uses that in Black Ops 3. Like it just, it's a gun that's like whatever. No one really uses that sniper rifle. But on PC, it's a death cannon. And so they have to balance these things differently. I hope they actually do that going forward. But ladies and gentlemen, that's all I have for you guys here in this video. Thank you all so much for listening. Sledgehammer Games is paying attention. They are going to be working to make sure the game is as hack free as humanly possible. And I definitely think that is a very good sign for the future of Call of Duty World War II on the PC platform. Once again, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know your thoughts down there in the comment section below. Now that we are done with the betas themselves, what changes, what balancing changes do you want to see happen to Call of Duty World War II before it comes out in November? Keep in mind, we are now 30 days away. Cannot wait. Let me know about that down there in the comment section below. And I hope you guys all have a wonderful day.